I have two finishes this week. If you're a regular viewer, you might be able to guess what one of them is. I have made some progress on another project. I'm about to cast on something new. And I have one, two, three, four, four new purchases to tell you about, I think. I've got quite a lot this week. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're new here, my name is Anakin. I design knitting patterns, I teach knitting workshops online and in person, and I sell yarn through our website yarnavic.co.uk. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. I also have some very, very exciting news to tell you about. So I'm going to tell you about that first because I'm just bursting with excitement, and then we'll get to what I'm wearing today. But let me tell you about this really exciting news first. I think I've hinted at this a couple of times, so there's a very exciting knitting retreat coming up somewhere in Southern Europe, and it's going to be in Italy, and it's going to be next year. I thought it was going to be in 2026, but a date has opened up for next April. So April 2025, I'm taking a group of knitters to Italy for a knitting escape in the, I think it is pronounced Le Malche, my K, my K, I'm not sure. It's uh, central Italy, um, the coast around Ancona and inland from Ancona, which is on the Adriatic coast. I think according to Wikipedia, I think it's pronounced Le Marque or Le, Le Marque or Le Marque. Marque? I will put it on the screen. Um, anyway, I will put the link in the description box below. At the moment, when I click on the link on my laptop, it comes up with like a warning thing. When I click on it on my phone, I don't have a problem. The venue is looking into it. Um, it may be something to do with uh, the latest update of Chrome. So if you've got using Chrome on your laptop or your phone or your tablet or wherever you're watching this, uh, that might be the reason why. But just in case you click on it and you get a warning, that I don't think there's anything wrong, um, but just maybe wait a few days or um, use a different device because I don't have any problems with it on my phone, but I do on my laptop and I've notified the venue of that so they are looking into it. All the booking is through the venue where I, the uh, retreat is being held um, rather than through me. So that's why kind of their website things are beyond my control. But I thought I'd just mention that in case you have any problems. If you have any problems, just message me and we'll sort it out. So, do you fancy joining me for a fabulous week in Italy next year? So, 11th to 18th of April 2025, we are going to Hotel Leone in Le Marquet. Le Marquet? I hope I'm pronouncing that roughly correctly. If you speak Italian, let me know. It's um, not too far from Ancona. The nearest international airport is Ancona. As well as exploring the local area and local crafts, we will have plenty of time to knit and relax. I will be designing a retreat project, uh, which will be based around lace knitting, and I'll design workshops based around that project as well. I will design a project for the uh, retreat, which will be lace knitting, and there will be options. So regardless of your knitting ability, whether you have never done lace knitting before or you are an experienced lace knitter, there will be options for you. There'll be a small project and something a bit bigger. I haven't decided exactly what yet, but I have some ideas. Uh, so I'll be working on that for the next, uh, for the rest of this year, really. There will also be yarn and pattern and some other knitting goodies in a goodie bag, which you'll get on arrival from me. So, I'm really excited about it. It's just amazing. So we've got several excursions planned for this uh, week-long retreat. So the 
price includes uh, all tuition fees so we'll have some workshops and then we'll have lots of spare time free time that we can just chill around the hotel or hopefully on the terraces if it's warm enough and sit and knit and chat and obviously if you need any help with your knitting I'm there to help you um, so it includes all the tuition fees uh, seven nice accommodation in luxury air-conditioned um, ensuite rooms you can choose whether you want to share with somebody or whether you want your own room um, all meals are included including breakfast buffet lunch and uh, up to four courses on for evening um, meal and local wines are included a pizza evening at a local restaurant within a few minutes walk of the hotel three generations of the same family will teach us how to make pasta will be a hands-on experience and i think we get to eat what we make afterwards which is great fun we're going to be hunting for truffles and then we're going to have a gastronomic lunch afterwards based on what we found um when we were hunting for truffles we'll be doing an eco printing workshop uh, with a local uh, on a local farm with a family of weavers and we are going to be visiting a pottery to see how they use traditional methods to make uh, pottery really really exciting the uh, week also includes private transfers to and from Ancona airport and um all our excursions and everything are included so i'm really really excited the hotel looks amazing um they specialize in doing craft and arts retreats so they do a lot of painting things and art retreats um they do yoga retreats and various things like that i think they're just branching into knitting retreat and i think my retreat might be the first knitting retreat they're hosting so i'm really really excited i hope i whetted your appetite for it and you're interested in joining me in italy um i'll put the link below and as i said if you have any problems with the link let me know i know i passed on the information to the hotel and they're working on it as well but as the booking is now open i didn't want to wait any longer to share it with you so let me know what you think of that i'm very very excited about it and i hope you'll be able to join me okay so let's talk about what i've been knitting since i'm wearing one of them so last week let me just check my notes um where i got to last week oh yes i think last week i'd finished a body and i was doing the button band and i think i was talking about whether i would have to rip out the button band or not oh i've just realized i caught my just realized i caught my bracelet on my knitting and i pulled out a strand of yarn oh that's really annoying look right i'm just going to try and pull that through to the back it's like hopefully we're okay um let me just button up this button again okay so i think last week i was talking about the button band i picked up and i was halfway through knitting the button band or nearly at the end of the button band i think and my kind of general rule when it comes to button bands is to pick up roughly three stitches for every four rows i find for stocking stitch fabric that works quite well uh, for button bands and I didn't think about the fact that, of course, this is garter stitch, it's not stocking stitch. So I picked up three stitches for every four rows uh, all the way down the front. And then at the back, I picked up one stitch for each stitch I cast on for the back neck because it's knitted top down. So the back of the neck was fine, but this front bit was not fine. It was really um, uh, wavy. <laughs> it was a bit wonky. Um, so I measured my tension and I measured the length of the button band and I did a bit of maths and I ended up picking up 100 stitches less than I originally picked up. So can you imagine that? So I had 100 stitches too many the first time. No wonder the button band was turning out a bit frilly. So I wasn't happy about picking that up because I think originally I had like a 50, 40, 540, something like that, stitches. So I ended up with about 100 stitches less. So obviously it was quicker to re knit. Um, I used the buttons. I don't know if you can see them. If you remember when I went to Norway last month, I bought some buttons. I bought some pink ones and some purple ones in two separate shops, but they are the same. So I decided to use the purple ones. That's the, hang on, can I get this to focus? I'm not very good at getting things to focus but they're uh, sparkly buttons I've still got the pink ones I was going to mix them up but I actually felt like the purple ones went better with the colors in this garment so I went for the purple ones and um 
I like the buttons, they're fairly small. I normally prefer bigger buttons so I can put fewer of them in, but I just love these when I saw them. I thought they'd be perfect. Very happy with the fit of this. I have recorded a little video which I'll insert here. I'm wearing kind of animal print leggings today because I should have gone to Pilates this morning, but I wasn't feeling 100% this morning and I'm very, very tired and I've had really bad neck pain and uh, shoulder pain for the last week. So I decided, and the weather is really horrible today. So I decided I didn't want to go to Pilates so I got dressed for Pilates and then I didn't go um I haven't been out of the house at all today I should have walked the dog I should have run some errands but I just don't feel like it so I took a bit of a longer knitting break this morning because I had um a bit of knitting left on the sleeve to do on this sleeve I had this morning I was probably here so I had this section left to do so I did a little bit of a longer knitting break mid-morning and then at lunchtime I thought I'm going to sit down and finish knitting this till it's done so that I can talk about today. Luckily I've woven in most of the ends so I just had the ones for the sleeve left to do so I did that quickly and then I quickly gave it a very quick steam press so I haven't washed it or blocked it or anything I just steam pressed it and I think that's enough I don't think it needs anything else um i'm quite happy with how it looks then i quickly measured it because what i am worried about is that it will stretch a little bit because this is superwash yarn and it is also in garter stitch it is um four ply yarn or sock yarn so it's not very heavy i don't know how much this one weighs so i haven't weighed it and i haven't got any scales in my office so i can't weigh it but i used three full skeins so all the yarn is from pixie yarns i used three full skeins this purple one at the top here, then I used like a blue one, variegated one, which had loads of different colours in, which I used from here down. And I, I'll try and stand up. I striped it with several different mini skeins from uh, the Pixie Yarns Mini Club, um, Quarterly Club last year. I got three, I think I got three of the gloves spring one the summer one and the christmas one i think i got um having so i've used most of them let me show you what i had left so i had um out of all the skeins i used i had this left and then i have two of the mini skeins i haven't used so i used one two three Four, five, five, five and a half skeins, I reckon. Yeah, so about five, probably five, five hundred and fifty grams. I need to weigh this and see what it weighs like, what it weighs really, but about that. Um, all I think all the yarns were one-offs, so they're non-repeatable, but that's fine. I really love this. It's colourful. It's a bit crazy, but I really like it. I could have made the sleeves longer, so the sleeves are kind of three-quarter length. I could have made them longer. I have yarn left, as you can see, so I could have made them longer. I might add a bit of length to it at some point. I will probably put the two skeins I have left and this one. I'll probably put that somewhere separate for a few weeks. So if I decide to knit it longer, I can do. At the moment, I was thinking, um, oh, one thing I wanted to finish it, and also I was thinking, I'm a bit worried that it's going to stretch, so I thought if I make it three-quarter length, then if it stretches a little bit, it doesn't matter. But also, I just wanted to finish it, kind of. And I thought if I'm wearing long sleeve t-shirts, three-quarter length is fine, because it's quite warm, because um, it is wool, even though it's just four plies, uh, because it's got a stitch, it's fairly dense. And I thought if I want, if it's a bit chilly in the summer and I want to wear it, I might be able to wear it over a t-shirt or a dress without it being too warm because of the shorter sleeves. But I expect this is probably something I will mostly wear in the winter. Today it is quite cold here, considering the fact that it's April. Um, I'm wearing a t-shirt and I must admit this part of my arm is feeling a little bit chilly. Um, but if I was wearing a long sleeve t-shirt, it'd be absolutely fine. The thing I finished is my socks i got this yarn when i went to norway at christmas it is dalagan which is a norwegian company and the yarn is called uh it's varm v-a-r-m which means warm and it is sock yarn dk weight 75 percent superwash wool 30, 25 percent nylon um 
it is 260 meters per 100 gram um i used 3.25 millimeter needles i think and i did use my standard toe up sock pattern except i diff did a different heel and i have a video coming out on this i think next tuesday because i mucked up a little bit so i decided to do shadow wrap heels i've never done shadow wrap uh, short row heels before i have done um fish lips kiss heels which are similar i think to shadow wrap heels but it's well since i've done them what, two years ago just over two years ago so i can't actually remember but i think they're similar um but the first heel i really messed up so i recorded a video where i showed you how i fixed it because on this side i've got a few holes and things i still got this kind of like green i don't know whether it's that visible but this green strand here i think i worked out on the second sock what i may have done wrong but i ended up doing a bit of surgery here uh just to neaten it up this side was better but the second sock i was much happier with um i don't know whether i'm going to be doing this heel again but the second heel i was certainly much much happier with than the first one i haven't asked someone to try them on yet to see make sure they fit um, i wanted to talk about them here first but he did try this one on when i gone past the heel just to check that it was long enough um i ended up knitting the leg a lot longer than i thought i would be able to and um I did 70 rounds on the leg, I think, and which I was quite pleased with because that was longer than I thought I'd be able to. So on Friday we went up to Wales because it was my daughter's birthday. We went to Cardiff to the theatre and we saw a play or a musical called Come From Away. So it was about 9-11 um, and all the planes that got stranded when the terrorist attacks of 9 on 9-11 happened. Uh, a bunch of planes got stranded in Newfoundland at Ganda Airport, which is a sort of international stopover place, I think. It's quite a it's a place a lot of in, uh, transatlantic flights stop to refuel. Like my husband thinks that when he flew to Toronto for the first time, he may have had a stop over there. But so the um, musical is about this small community which suddenly get um, several planes. I can't remember how many planes they said it was, but suddenly they have to land there and stranded. And it's about the people of the town and the people on one of the planes and their stories. Um, it, it's a musical the music was absolutely fabulous the singing was fabulous it had this sort of kind of sea shanty folky type of vibe to it really really loved it um it was very funny and there were some sad bits as well because obviously we're talking about 9-11 so there were some quite sad bits and obviously those of us who remember 9-11 um i mean if you're kind of in your 20s or younger you probably wouldn't remember it but yeah it's um it was really good um, musical and if you get the chance to go and see it I highly recommend it uh, it doesn't have an intermission so it went right through so I think it was about an hour and 45 minutes something like that and I we drove up to Cardiff on Friday afternoon or Friday morning yeah Friday morning um, traffic was quite heavy so I got loads of knitting done in the car because I did, I did a bit of driving but not a lot so I think last week I took my marker out I think I was somewhere down here i think so i knitted all this in the car and then on um friday afternoon i managed to knit the heel because i was desperate to get past the heel before we got to the theater and then when we got to the theater i was where that blue marker is here and i knitted all of that at the theater so most of the leg I knitted 57 rounds and I had 56 stitches per round. So that is 3,192 stitches. We had balcony seats and uh, we were at the Wales Millennium Centre, I think it's called, the theatre in Cardiff Bay. And we were on the balcony and we had individual seats and they were quite comfortable seats. So um, I find sometimes, especially all the theatres are a bit cramped, but we had quite a lot of space. I quite like that. 
Okay, so that's the first pair of socks. And then I also brought uh, my other pair of socks with me to Wales. I knitted a bit on it on Saturday. We went into Cardiff Saturday morning, I think it was, and then drove home Saturday afternoon. And last week when I filmed, I got to where that alpaca marker is. So I knitted that bit on Saturday. Um, so I did the heel, uh, did the gusset and the heel turn, um, I think before we went to Wales and then I knitted kind of the heel flap and started on the leg while we were in Wales and driving home. These look a little bit long for, to me. Um, I think I need to try them on before I go any further and see if they're too long. If they are too long, I might just cut off the toe and re-knit the toe top down because I'm not re-knitting the whole foot. But they do look a bit long for me. Um, let's just see how they compare to Simon's socks. As we are. Uh, yeah, so Simon is one size bigger than me. Um, they might be a bit too long for me. Oh, one thing I forgot to say about these socks. I So I divided the ball of yarn into two balls. So they'd be smaller. And then I knitted, I weighed them, and because it's very difficult to get them both exactly the same. So one was slightly like a gram more than the other one. So I used the smallest ball first, and I managed to do 70 rounds on the leg, and then I um, cast off. And I still had a little bit of yarn left, which I used to fix the heel. And then I had a tiny bit left, but I threw it away. And then when I did the second sock, when I did the first one, I hadn't actually written down how many rounds I did between the toe and the heel turning the short row heel I normally write that down but I hadn't and I'd taken a picture of it the day before we went to Cardiff and I had markers in marking where I started the rib and where I stopped for the heel so I had those markers in place and normally I would count that and I have a um folder in a notes app on my phone where I keep track of how many rounds I knit on various socks and I hadn't done that so in the car when I realized that I was trying to count number of rounds from the picture on my phone and I got it right I double checked it when I got home and I got it right but still even though the second sock was um had more tiny bit more yarn like a gram or something I actually got to 69 rounds and I did the 70th round but I realised I wouldn't have enough to cast off. So I only picked one round so I cast off the 69 rounds. The other one, so this one is 70 rounds and the second sock is 69 rounds. I had a quick look to see if it looked any different. I'm just going to do it again. So we'll line up the heel. No, nope, no difference. So this sock is one round less than that sock, but you can't tell. Even in DK yarn, you can't tell. Um, they don't match, by the way. I didn't bother. I started at the same point, but I had more of that variegated bit on the first sock than I did on the second sock. But I'm not that bothered about socks matching, really. Um, so they don't match, but I don't care. And Simon doesn't care either, so that's fine. So, yeah, there's one round more on one sock than the other. Okay, back to these socks. Let me just try it on this. Uh, sock blocker so I am worried that the foot is a tiny bit too long um yeah I don't know I'm going to try them on after this and then we'll see if they are too long I will fix it so this one is mainly kind of out and about knitting it's lazy it's not super easy but it's fine if we get go to a coffee shop or something like that I can just sit and knit on it so this is lives in my small project bag that I got in Norway big enough for half a ball of yarn and a sock and I can just throw it in my handbag when we go out. That's all the knitting I've done this week so let's talk about uh, the um, things that have arrived this week. So first let me show you this. I left it in the box so I wouldn't um, lose it because it is quite small. So I, lovely viewer uh, Alison sent me a gift voucher last year, last August I think it was, from uh, Atomic Knitting 
I love atomic knitting. I got I have loads of her stitch markers. When I used to do a yarn club for a long time, I used to include a tin with stitch markers from atomic knitting in each like three month membership. Um, so I really like atomic knitting. Her website below. She does amazing stitch markers, but she also does a lot of other stuff. So I had a gift voucher. I added a little bit to it. So this might have been a freebie because I don't remember whether I ordered this or not. So it's a ball of yarn with um is it in needle straight or is it a crochet hook? I can't tell. Um it's got like a lobster, is that called a lobster claw? So really like that. That's lovely. And then I got one of these this is suitable not just for knitting but also for other things if you have cardigans that are open without buttons you can attach these and this has got like i don't know if i can show you it doesn't focus very well but it's got like a rainbow of colors so i'll show you i'll clip it up here but obviously you clip it a bit further down and if you're wearing a cardigan that's open and you have buttons you can clip that to keep it together obviously you wouldn't clip it up there but you clip it sort of around your bust area i guess but i have had one of these from some another company before i really like this with the rainbow sparkly um i've got a couple of things i'm knitting later this year that this will be perfect for so i really like that and then i also saw this which i've seen i saw i think it was an american maker i saw this last year and I thought, well, that looks like really good fun. So I bought it and it's one of these tape measures on the stitch marker, basically. So you put the stitch marker on your needle somewhere in the middle of your knitting. And then if you have to knit, say, 10 centimetres, let me just take this off. It's got this wiggly thing, which is really cool. So I don't want to lose that. So I'm just going to put it around again because I don't want to lose that but it keeps the tape measure folded and it's quite easy to get off and put it back on again so if you hang this on your knitting and then pull this down to where you want to knit to so if you have to knit 10 centimeters what I believe you do is you as you knit you can see when it gets to 10 centimeters so that's from atomic knitting and then my uh, Spectrum Fiber March Club yarn arrived. So if you've been watching for a while, you'll know that I'm doing the Spectrum Fiber yarn club this year. It's a double knitting option. Uh, so it is 100% Superwash Merino, 230 meters per 115 grams. This color is called Pina Colada. And it looks a bit washed out in this light, but it's like a very pale, creamy yellow with pink and yellow and lime green speckles so the previous colors were i'm gonna to have to write on them i think what they are so that was january this was february let me just grab a pen and write that on because i've written on january but not this one february and this is march so i'm just going to write that on while i think about it um i'm thinking about doing a blanket um i had one idea for a crochet blanket but i don't want to start until i finish my current crochet blanket but then i also had an idea for a knitted blanket so now i'm not sure but i wanted to wait a few months and see what they end up looking like and what goes with what because i didn't think i asked if they were a fade and i was told no but they would all go together i don't particularly like those two together i mean they're fine for a blanket i guess but these two quite go together so I'll see how it goes this month. Um, I have some magazine deadlines and things coming up. So I might cast them for something this month. I might not. I might wait till next month. And then on Saturday, we went into Cardiff to do some shopping. I went to John Lewis. I always have a look at their yarn selection, but they, do, they don't do a lot. It's not a huge yarn selection. I'll show you a video clip here now of it.
so I had a look they did um some quite a large selection of Rowan and West Yorkshire spinners and then a few other brands which I can't remember but I've seen this advertised online so West Yorkshire spinners elements which is 60% Lycosel 40% Falcon Islands wool it's a DK weight um I think Lycosel is the same as Tencel I think yeah, because it's got Tencel logo, so I guess Tencel is the brand name. So it's DK, I've got three colours I thought were pretty that I could use together in a project if I decide to. It's got a sort of kind of shiny look to it, and I quite like it. I've knitted with Merino Tencel yarn before. When I used to do hand dyed yarn, I had a blend that was Merino and Tencel. It was quite popular at the time, I haven't seen any hand dyes do it for a while. I also have some magazine submissions coming up, so I thought it might be useful for that. That's kind of why I bought it. But I also chose three colours so I thought went nicer together so I could use them in a project. But mainly I just bought them to try them out. And I only got the three colours because I thought then if I decide to make something with it, I have a bit more choice. So that was from John Lewis in Cardiff. And then last week I was telling you about the yarn I got from uh, Pixie Yarns this one which is the Yarnies colorway and I believe that is a exclusive that she had for East Anglia Yarn Festival but I think it's still on her website. It looks a little bit brighter on the screen than it does in real life but it's gorgeous and I was wondering whether to order three more so I can knit a sweater. So there we go. Um, I got four of them. I think 400 grams should be enough. This one was over 500 grams but this is garter stitch, so it's a lot more condensed. I'm going to do a lace project with this. So I can use bigger needles and make it more airy, so I'll use less yarn. So I think 400 grams will be enough. I showed you last week, I think, some swatches I've knitted. And I'm actually thinking about this swatch. I'm thinking about doing that in this yarn. Um, and then the other swatch I showed you, I think it was last week I showed you, this one I'm going to do in the, um, hang on, I've already put a ball of yarn in my Fohi project bag to take downstairs with me. So this is Yachtigan Organic Trio, which is 50% organic merino wool, 25% organic cotton and 25% silk. I think I'm going to make this sweater, this swatch, in that. And I think I'm going to do that first because this is going to be lighter and more summery. So I think I'm going to do that first so that it's ready for summer. I decided to use this project bag again. I put a ball of yarn in here to take that sesame so I can start knitting. I spent some time earlier on um, just checking I had the chart all typed up, working out the numbers I need to cast on. But I don't know what needle size I used to knit the swatch. I haven't written it down in my notebooks. I need to have a look on my phone in a minute when I finish filming and just check if I've wrote it down on my phone. I have a notes section on my phone that I write a lot of stuff down because otherwise I don't know which needle size to use. I think I know. I think I probably used the 3.5 millimeter. But I may have to knit another swatch or I can live dangerously and just cast them and go for it. I haven't decided yet, but this is what I'm thinking about going for first. So unless that, and I think I'm going to cast them for that today. I am waiting for some yarn to arrive for a magazine design, but I think I'm going to cast on for that while I'm waiting um, because I'd like to get going with it and maybe get it finished by the end of this month. It just depends on how things work out with magazine designs this month. So that is, oh, I got one more thing. So when I got the yarn from Pixie Yarns, the three skeins, I also ordered some fibre. So apologies for the rustling, I left the fibre in the bag to keep it tidy. So that's the card that came with it. I love her photos, they're just gorgeous. That's a fabulous colour as well. I really, really like Pixie Elle, her colours are just amazing. So I ordered a braid of fibre. So I have a spinning wheel. I started spinning in my late 30s. I'm now 55 this year, later this year. I bought my first spin spinning wheel very quickly and then when I was 40 which I guess maybe was like a year or two after I started spinning I'm not sure 
but when I was 40 my parents got me a major craft little gem wheel for my birthday it's quite expensive so I was quite excited they were willing to get it for me for my birthday and I love it and I spun quite a lot for a few years I went to uh, even took it to London with me it's a wheel that you can fold down and it comes in its own travel bag so I took it to London with me to go for a spinning workshop with an American teacher and I loved it. And I was really into spinning for several years. I never actually knitted with much of my hand spun. I just enjoyed spinning. And I wasn't that fussed about using my hand spun for anything. And I had a fairly decent size um, fibre stash. I had a drum carder, uh, which I sold a few years ago. And I had got all the spinning gear. Some of it is put away, so I need to find it again. But then I started writing my first book. And I just didn't have time to spin. And as time went on, I just haven't touched my spinning wheel for years so earlier this year I brought it out well it's in the lounge so it's there but I noticed that the uh, drive band had uh, snapped so in January I ordered a new drive band there is a local spinning group that meets uh, one Saturday a month and I think they're meeting this Saturday and I had planned to go but I haven't found out the details yet so I don't know and I haven't got my wheel up and going but my plan was to spend a couple hours giving the wheel a good clean, put on this new dry band, to check if it need oiling and just get it going again. Um, but a few years ago, I had a big clear out in my room and because I hadn't spun for so many years and I had all this beautiful fiber, I was a member of uh, Sweet Georgia Yarns Fiber Club for several years, for two or three years maybe. And so I had all these like 100 gram bundles of fiber. Um, some of them are colours I didn't particularly like because obviously as a club you get colours you don't like but some of them are beautiful. I think I sold most of them. I've still got a couple of bundles of fibre at the top here um, but they're larger lots. So I have the fibre I was spinning when I stopped spinning. <laughs> That's still on the wheel and there's the leftover. I have a basket in the lounge with the leftover fibre from that lot. So I might try and spin that first just to practice but I thought I need to get something else so I can... Um, have a go at it and I was going to buy some when we went to unravel but of course we had to cancel that and we do have wonderful coming up but I wanted to make sure I had some fiber to spin with if I get into it before wonderful which is in two weeks um so I ordered this from pixie yarns as well so it's a blend of blues on the picture on the website I thought it looked like maybe it had a bit more gray in it but it's a really pretty color and it's I think it's just merino um Superwash Grey Merino, 80% or 20% nylon. So Superwash Grey Merino and nylon. So the yarn um, or the fibre undyed is grey. So it's, that's why the colours are a bit darker. So I'm going to have a go at spinning that. Um, I'm going to try when I get my wheel out and start to try and get it back into working order to try and film it and then film my kind of beginning spinning journey again. I got quite good at spinning. I got quite good at spinning really thin yarn. So I regret stopping completely for so long, but I want to get back into it again. So I will keep you posted. Before we finish, uh, just a bit of an update. Uh, the video this on Tuesday this week was uh, a new needle case I got for my interchangeable needles. And I talked about the needle case and what I think of it. I, somebody in one of my workshops recently had one and I went and ordered one and I show you, tell you what I think about it, if I like it or not, and how I organize my needles in it. So that video was out on Tuesday this week. So I will link that below and at the end of this video. Next week, I forgot to check before I started filming, but I think next week is the video on how I fix these, uh, the heel on these socks. I don't mind admitting that I sometimes make mistakes and sometimes end up with stuff I'm not 100% happy with because I think we all do as knitters and for me to pretend otherwise is a bit silly. So I thought rather than just fixing the heel and keeping it quiet, I thought I would own up to my <laughs> bad heel and show you what I did to fix it. So that if you try something new and it doesn't quite work out, but you think if you just fix it a bit, you can live with it, go and watch that video. It'll be out next Tuesday. I also have next week on the 16th of April at Spinny Yarn in Bobby Tracy in Devon. I'm teaching my brioche, my brioche basics workshop. So if you live anywhere near Devon and you'd like to learn how to knit brioche, um, 
that's the kind of thing you can nip once you learn brioche then do contact spinny yarn to book your place there are still spaces on that workshop i will put spinny yarn's link below this video and then on the 9th of may i'm teaching mosaic knitting um i'll put a picture on the screen if i can because i forgot to get my mosaic scarf out i do actually have a plan for a couple of new mosaic designs that i want to work on over the summer i have a lot of knitting plans at the moment um so that's on the 9th of may at spinny yarn in bobby tracy in devon just south of exeter so if you're not familiar with devon and you're coming from somewhere up country it's just up the a38 south of exeter so it's really easy to get to um so that is what's coming up don't forget my knitting retreat in italy next year april next year i hope you will be able to join me do take a look it's going to be really good fun i love traveling i love knitting and i love hosting retreats and I have for a while I've been thinking I really like to host a retreat abroad but the whole organizing it was kind of making me feel a little bit like organizing the accommodation and excursions and everything else was just felt like a bit too much to take on so uh, the lovely Madeline at Hotel Leone she's organizing it all and I will host the event and I'm really excited about it so hope you'll be able to join me I'll put the link below and as I said if you have problems with the link try on another device or if you're still having problems let me know and i'll put you in touch with um with the hotel and you can get more information that way um they're trying to fix the link uh, so hopefully it'll be fine by the time this video goes out okay i think that's it this is a slightly longer video today so i hope you're still with me thank you for watching i really appreciate it if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing and i will see you next time thanks for watching